Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm very fond of saying that I want you on the most effective MS disease-modifying therapy that you're comfortable taking. In this video, I'm going to dissect that sentence and help you understand exactly what I mean. Now don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. When I say that I want you on the most effective disease-modifying therapy that you're comfortable taking, this is a sentence that I crafted very carefully, and I'm gonna break it in half. I first wanna pay attention to the first phrase, the most effective disease-modifying therapy. Now, the majority of MS treaters do it dead wrong, and I mean that genuinely. They ascribe to an escalation model, which I think is massively flawed. Now, I have a lot of YouTube videos on this channel where I've talked about that. And throw, I'll, I'll throw a link right here to an old video on that topic in case you'd like to hear more. But in summary, the thought process behind escalation sounds good at first blush. We're going to start you off on a low-efficacy medicine that has very nice side effects, so it's easy to tolerate. And we'll see how things go. And if you do great on that drug, well, then that's a great drug, and I'm a great doctor, and you're a great patient. Hooray! But if you don't do well, well, that's okay, because then we can escalate you to a second drug that might be more effective, but have a less favorable side effect profile. And on that more efficacious drug, we'll see how things go. And if you do well on the second drug, well, then that's a great drug, and I'm a great doctor, and you're a great patient. Hooray! And if you don't do okay on that drug, well, that's also okay, because we'll simply escalate you to something that's even better. Again, going up on efficacy in exchange for potentially worse side effects. The thought behind escalation is that it's supposed to be an awesome sauce balance of risk and benefit. And that's hogwash. That's simply not the reality of the way multiple sclerosis behaves and the way that we need to attack it. Here's the deal. The most pathologic damage that a human being experiences with MS is in the first five to 10 years of the disease. That's when we have the most inflammation, and that's when we have the most pathologic damage. But it's also the time that that human is the, the youngest they're ever gonna be, they have the most neuroplasticity they're ever gonna have, and their brain can easily rewire early on. And so they're not necessarily aware of the damage that's occurring. MS is not all about attack, no attack, spot, no spot. The, the brain is under attack constantly, and as we start to understand topics like smoldering MS, it becomes increasingly clear that starting off on a low efficacy medicine is really not a good idea. There are very clear studies where they'll take a group of people with MS and they'll randomly put them on either a high efficacy drug or a lower efficacy drug. And after two years, they see how they've done. And all the people that were on the low efficacy drug can then go on the high efficacy drug. Well, what we learned was when the patients were on a low efficacy drug, they had more attacks and they had more spots and they accrued more disability. When they started on the high efficacy drug two years later, their disease slowed down. But listen carefully because they never caught back up. The group of patients that started on the high efficacy drug, not only did they have less events, but they had less disability and they set a trajectory that was a better trajectory. The people that started off on low efficacy and then later escalated to high efficacy had accrued disability and they never got it back. And that's not okay. The escalation model is flawed. It presumes that the doctor is completely aware of all the things going on with your MS. It presumes that you're aware of all the things that are going on with your MS. It presumes that we can catch a problem as soon as we have it. And it also presumes that these low efficacy medicines are in fact better tolerated with less risk. And I'm not sure that I necessarily believe that. The better part of Valor, in my strong opinion, is to use the most effective medicine that you're okay taking. I want to bring a SWAT team to a knife fight. Why? Because I don't know how to use a knife. I don't want to fight a knife fight. I want four guys in front of me that look like G.I. Joe with flak jackets and semi-automatic weapons and they're gonna fight MS, and I'm gonna stand behind them with one finger raised as they fight my knife fight. I want to bring to the table every tool I have to bear. I want to preserve your neurologic reserve. And I feel like the data is very, very clear. 
the earliest application of the most effective medicine is the best way for us to do that. If you go back to that idea I was sharing about escalating, where the doctor would say, well, if it doesn't work out, that's okay, we'll upgrade. It doesn't work out means that you accrued brain damage, that you suffered neurological injury, and you've got about a 40 or 50% chance of not fully recovering. That's nonsense. If I was to ask your spouse, she suffered brain damage, I showed you the MRI, how much more brain damage are you comfortable with her accruing? The spouse would put a protective arm around a shoulder and say, honey, let's get out of here, because that's crazy. The spouse's answer is zero, please. If I asked you whether you wanna walk your daughter down the aisle on her wedding night or wheel her down the aisle, you would find that to be rude because of course you wanna to try to walk her down the aisle. If we want to try to live our very best life despite having MS, we can't dilly-dally early on. We can't languish on low efficacy drugs and allow you to have breakthrough disease. And then when we see that it's not working, escalate. That makes me feel like you could say, okay, have unprotected sex, and if you get pregnant, well then we'll teach you the rhythm method. And then have unprotected sex with the rhythm method, and if you get pregnant, well then we'll give you a land skin condom that has holes in it. And if you use the lambskin condom and then you get pregnant again, well, we'll finally give you a birth control pill. Of course, now you have four kids. When you're using a contraceptive, a birth control pill, it's not because you're trying to get rid of the three kids you already have, that's already done. You're on birth control to prevent an unplanned event. And that is exactly what we're trying to do. And if I gave you the option between a birth control pill that wasn't very effective and a birth control pill that is, we're all picking this one. And we need to apply the same logic when it comes to the application of disease-modifying therapies in MS. I'm looking for the drug that will give me the very best relapse rate reduction because my goal is not to have less attacks, it's to have no attacks. I'm looking for a drug that shuts down new MRI brain damage and new spinal cord damage as robustly as possible. I'm looking for a drug that's able to slow brain volume loss and very importantly, I wanna use a drug that's able to slow disability progression. And not all drugs are equal. And so I'm going for the biggest guns that you're okay with. With that stated, now let's look at the second half of that sentence that you're comfortable with. Real quick before we move on, you do me a favor. If you like this video, would you please give it a thumbs up? That teaches the YouTube algorithm that you like this content and helps push it out so more families impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. I want you on the most effective drug that you're comfortable taking. Let's focus on the comfortable taking part because that's really, really important. I discuss drugs based on efficacy. That's how I start my conversation. So when I'm talking to you and I'm presenting drugs that we might consider taking, I'm gonna start with the most effective thing that you're eligible for, which does not mean that's the thing that you're comfortable taking. When I say comfortable, really in medical terms, we're talking about two things tolerability and safety. Tolerability means you can put up with it. If the most effective drug is an intravenous infusion and you can't handle getting an intravenous infusion or you can't get to an infusion center or whatever, that's not a good option for you. And you have to be able to tolerate the therapy. If I'm giving you a highly effective pill, but it makes you feel like you're gonna throw up and it makes you have massive diarrhea, you can't tolerate that. And so we must have tolerability. When you treat multiple sclerosis, we're treating for life. We're treating for the duration of your life. We're trying to preserve the neurologic reserve, not for days or months, but not even years, for decades. And so it's not acceptable that I ask you to take something that you can't put up with. It's real big of me to say, hey, take this shot, but I'm not the one injecting myself. And so not only am I trying to find the most effective drug, but I have to find an effective drug that you can tolerate, that you can put up with taking. It's also relevant to share that that can change over time. In the ancient days of yesteryear, when all we had was injections, we would have to be cheerleaders and say, you can do it, you can inject yourself. And what we would find is not over years, but over a decade, people develop injection fatigue it just gets really freaking hard to jab themselves. And patients will muster up courage and they'll do it, but it's hard. I remember patients telling me stories where they would literally pace 
and they would have to kind of get themselves all fired up or they would have to ask their, their spouse to do it because it was such a terrible experience for them. That's not tolerable and I don't think that's fair. Now, the second part of comfortable is safety. And using a high efficacy drug is awesome sauce, but not if it's not safe. And so we wanna make sure that the drug is not damaging your liver or your kidneys. We wanna make sure that it's not increasing your particular infection risk. We need to make sure that the safety is appropriate. And a lot of that falls on the supervision of the doctor who's monitoring all the laboratories and looking at the scans and making sure that everything's going okay. It's a two-way street because we both have to be aligned with the safety of the medication. I'll give you an example. Natalizumab, uh, Tysabri, is a very effective drug. It's one of the best drugs that we have out there. And if someone is JC virus antibody negative, then they're not at risk of uh, an infection called PML that people could get with Tysabri. So you can imagine someone is on Tysabri, they're JC virus negative, and they're rocking the Casbah. They're doing awesome on their drug and they develop JC virus positivity. They come in contact with this virus and so now they have JC virus positivity. That changes the safety profile of Tysabri quite considerably from no risk to a small risk of a very serious infection. Now for some patients, that small risk is completely okay with them. They don't mind. Other patients are terrified and I don't feel like it's my right to tell you whether or not you should be okay with that. I feel it's my ethical obligation to teach you the statistics, the exact risk, make sure you understand that, and then listen to your answer. And if you said, I'm not comfortable with that, because you're not comfortable with the safety, then we're gonna to need to find another drug. So in summary, I want you on the most effective disease-modifying therapy that you're comfortable taking. The biggest thing that you could do to help me grow this channel is to watch another video. So if you'd like to up your game and learn more about multiple sclerosis, Click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.